Welcome everybody back to the Friar Talk podcast and YouTube channel. For today's episode, we're going to be going over Manny Machado, Nolan Arenado, the player of the month for the NL was Arenado, and when you talk about the top third baseman in the league, these are two guys that get brought up a lot. So we wanted to discuss a little bit of, one, why Manny Machado has been better than, than Nolan Arenado this year and should have won player of the month, um, and also why it's we're going to talk about why it's weird that they kind of don't get brought up in the same conversation when it comes to being the top third baseman in the league uh, because if you look at Machado's numbers over the past couple of years they have been better um, but both these guys are clearly marquee players at the third base position so Isaac what do you feel about player of the month and one who do you think is better and two why do you think Machado just doesn't get like brought up in the conversation for top third baseman in the MLB Manny Machado should have won that player of the month. And I mean, it, it's very evident. I, I feel like every, almost all numbers show that he should have been the player of the month. He's absolutely been the, the catalyst of this Padres. Him and Eric Hosmer have both been the catalyst of this Padres lineup. Essentially, the reason why our offense is even producing runs in the first place. Um, and, and you look at that Cardinals lineup, they have they have a lot better of a lineup than we do as of right now. Um, so even though Nolan Arenado, you know, he's having himself a great season for sure. You look at the numbers right here. You can see that Machado, even on F4 fan graphs, leads the league. Not only is he the best third baseman as of right now, he is the best player in baseball according to F4, according to war in general. He is the best player in baseball statistically as we speak. Offensive war. Machado's first. Arenado is third. So offensively, again, and, and I saw a list earlier today that was ranking the top 10 hitters in baseball as of right now. First, I believe, was Mike Trout, and I want to say second or third was Nolan Arenado. Meanwhile, Manny Machado was sixth. You look at the numbers. Manny Machado is second in batting average. He's fifth in on-base percentage, sixth in slugging percentage, whereas Arenado is tied for eighth in batting average. Arenado's ninth in on-base percentage. He's slightly ahead of uh, Manny Machado in slugging percentage and on-base percentage. He's right on OPS. He's right behind Manny Machado. So essentially they're neck and neck, but if you're looking just at the stats, Manny Machado has been better. He's carried our offense. I mean, we watch, I don't watch enough Nolan Arenado, but I'm going based off stats. And I mean, from the eye test as, as a Padres fan, Manny Machado has been the best player in baseball for sure for sure but chase brought it up manny machado just makes the hard plays look so easy he makes them look so easy even though you know he's not on this defensive war list right here um manny machado has just been fantastic in every way shape and form he's like i said the best player in baseball as of right now so to be snubbed in that way and not even get discussed in the same basically in the same vein as nolan Aaron. i don't i don't think he gets talked about enough for for how consistent he's been over the past couple of years, how good this contract is looking for the Padres. This is one of the, even though it's 30 million a year, this is the biggest bargain I can think of in the league right now. Maybe outside of, you know, like the, the young players, the guy, but I'm talking about just big contracts in general. This is a bargain. So lots of props to Manny Machado. He should have been the player of the month. He's on an MVP trajectory right now, carrying this Padres offense to an extent that I didn't think he could, that I didn't think anyone could because this outside of him and Hosmer, this Padres offense has been pretty weak. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I know I mentioned it earlier. Um, Arenado makes the same plays that Manny Machado makes, but he makes it look so much more difficult than Machado does. Machado just does it so smoothly. And I mean, when you get that, they had various stats. I think at the time of the player of the month, Machado was ahead of Arenado by like 0.2 war. I think Arenado may have had one more home run than him. But outside of that, Machado has been a much more important factor to the Padres than Arenado has been to the Cardinals. I mean, the only reason we won, uh, we were recording this on May 6th, but when, the only reason we won yesterday was because Machado hit two solo home runs. That is the only runs that we had the entire game. And two, of, I think we had maybe five hits. Two of the five hits were Manny Machado's solo shots. Without Manny Machado there, we would have lost to the Marlins. Ooh. Granted, are kind of a middle of the pack team, but still, Padres usually beat up on these teams and they buried one, uh, two runs. Anytime uh, 
he's been great defensively. He's kind of been the leader that we need to be. I mean, looking at it, he's been the best player in baseball. The only person I think you can argue that has been better, if not just as good as him throughout the entire MLB within the last few weeks is Taylor Ward, which if you haven't seen that guy's numbers, he's a Valley kid. He's from, uh, we played against him in high school. Absolute great kid. Going absolutely crazy. I know, Isaac, if you want to bring uh, up that uh, stat sheet that you had, I uh, don't know if you guys noticed it, but if you look at the complete bottom column, batting average, Taylor Ward is third on base. He's first slugging first on base plus slugging. He's first. He's probably the only person that has rivaled what Machado is doing right now. He may not be good as, as good as defensively as... Arenado or Machado, but he's the only one that has come close to being the same at, with the bat as Machado. And that speaks volume to what Machado has done with the team. Because if you get it, Ward is going absolutely insane. And Machado's been doing basically the same thing. He's slightly behind in OPS by, what, 90 points? And he's still over 1,100. You can't say that Manny Machado hasn't been the best player in baseball. Yeah, I mean, early on, I think another factor to this is when you're talking about, okay, who has a lot of pressure on him right now? Lauren Arenado doesn't have as much pressure as he does as Manny does because Manny has to carry this entire offense. The whole big question for the Padres was, once Tatis went out with the wrist injury, was are the Padres going to be able to float around 500? Are they going to be able to be an okay enough team so when Fernando comes back, they can make a playoff push? That was the question mark a a month ago. Now, the Padres are, what, seven, eight games over five hundred, And Machado has been the biggest reason for that, outside of the starting pitching. And also, you can bring up Eric Cosmer. Like, those two guys have completely carried the lineup. From a defensive standpoint, Machado has been excellent. He puts up gold glove caliber defense all the time. And he's completely stepped up to the plate and has carried this offense. He's been perfect for, for what you want. So, yes, right now he's been the best player in the league. But also the other thing is, in the 60-game season, he was top three in MVP voting. I th- want to say last year he was pretty high up there. I don't He wasn't top three or top five, but I want to say he wasn't that far behind that. Manny Machado was fantastic last year. So for the past two and 60, early this season, the full season last year in the 60-game season before that, Machado's put up better numbers than Arenado. And... It doesn't seem like, like you said, Isaac doesn't get talked in the same vein as him. Um, but he definitely should. You know, he should get talked at like, like one of the elite superstars in the league. Machado's just started to enter his prime the last, I would say, probably like last year. Um, not like he hasn't put up great numbers, but I feel like he's truly like taken a step. And I think he's going to continue to get better. And I think that, you know, over one of these next couple seasons, we could see him have an MVP year. Except the problem is, even if he puts up an MVP year, you see how people vote about him. He still probably won't win the award, unfortunately. But when we talk about Manny Machado, I think that the, the rest of the – I mean, Padre fans, of course, are going to praise him. I think Orioles fans will probably do that the same. I mean, they watched how great he was when he was on their team. They didn't have much success, though, so maybe – I don't know. Maybe they don't feel that, but it definitely wasn't Manny Machado's fault. Um, but you hear how other people talk uh, talk about him around the league, and you would think he's a meh player on – a you know, super inflated contract. He's been worth the contract for the Padres. When you look around big contracts that most guys get, they don't live up to that even close, like even like nearly. They're usually not even like their production completely falls off. They make a ton of money and it's like, oh, wow, this is really hurting this team. That's the majority of big contracts in baseball. Machado has not been that at all. And you look back on it and it is insane that the Padres were able to acquire him as a free agent that he reached free agency. That is insane. So, you know, props up for Manny Machado for carrying this team. I don't think he's ever going to get, you know, loved by the MLB voters, but I think all of all the Friar faithful has, has a ton of love for Manny Machado. So been pumped for what he's been able to bring to, to the table this year, um, and I cannot wait till we get to see this Manny Machado, you know, just absolutely balling out with the healthy Fernando. I think that's when you can start seeing this team really take off and this lineup drastically improve. So that's all I have. Anything else you guys want to add on the on the Manny Machado discussion? 
Yeah, I mean, of course, Manny Machado doesn't get talked about in the same vein as those guys just because of the history of Manny Machado. We know the history of Manny Machado before he was a Padre, and that kind of stuff sticks with you, unfortunately. But ever since he's been a Padre, he's been – I mean, he's essentially been a saint, right? He hasn't really done anything wrong other than get thrown out a couple times. But who doesn't get thrown out a couple times? Um, but Manny Machado has been the best player in baseball. He's um, – Basically, why this Padres offense is even producing runs in the first place is remember this Padres team is, although very low in batting average, they are third in runs in the whole league right now, despite not having Fernando Tatis and despite being one of the worst offenses in terms of average. I don't know about OPS, but um, even on base percentage, I think they're barely 13th, maybe in that 9th to 13th range, but they're still succeeding. They're getting a lot of time hitting primarily for Manny Machado. So, um, yeah, man, I think Manny Machado needs a lot more respect and hopefully he gets that soon. But at the end of the day, the only re result we want is to make the playoffs and hopefully a world series. And I think Manny Machado is going to be the backbone of that. Absolutely. Everything you said and more, and more importantly, it's kind of just, it's an East coast bias thing. You know, the Padres have always been one of the smaller market teams in the MLB. We used to never get posted on like the MLB's Instagram page, Twitter page. Anytime anything good happened to the Padres, it kind of just seems to be skipped over. And it's not even just Manny Machado. I mean, if you looked at the NL Rookie of the Month, it looked like Mackenzie Gore got snubbed, the reliever of the month, Taylor Rogers got snubbed, and they were all by Coast guys. There's definitely an East Coast bias in the MLB. They sort of only, if it's not the Dodgers or the Giants on the West Coast, then you know it no one else exists you know the potters have always been snubbed on these big rewards whether it be like cy young reliever of the month reliever of the year rookie of the year they've always been snubbed on this uh, it's just it's just how it happens you know and machado does have that history though he's changed a lot ever since he's come to the padres he's been a real leader he's been one of the best third basemen in baseball for a past decade you know it's he's always just going to get overlooked because he's on the padres Final thing I'll add before we take off is you, you bring up the East Coast bias. Chase, I'll tell you exactly why that's the case. Because no one's staying up that late enough on the East Coast to watch any of these games. That's why. Like, people literally do not watch the games on the East Coast. Same thing happens in the NBA. We see it if it's not the Lakers or a top-end team. So it is unfortunate. Um, but, you know, they've actually started. I mean, the games are shorter this year, it feels like it at least. And they've pushed up the start times by about like 30 minutes. So hopefully that does add something. Um, people on East Coast start watching maybe at least the beginning part of some of these games. But I don't know. I think that plays a, a large role in that. But it is unfortunate for the Padres and especially Manny Machado because he deserves a lot more praise than, than he's getting right now. So thank you all for listening. But that is going to do it. And let us know how you feel about Manny Machado in the comments.